Okay, so this is this is uh, this is the test. Um, so I mean, you, you know, you'll get the idea for the number of questions in race two. For the non-graphic calculator part, uh, asking us here to simplify an expression, we got to enter the expression. Now remember, I, you guys are old pros at this. So I probably don't have to even say this, especially on a test on, on one of these style questions, these algebra style questions. What do you always do before you hit submit? Display a response. Don't. I mean, be, for sure, do that. Hit display response and make sure that it's printing out that the computer is interpreting what you input the way you intended it to be interpreted. Okay. So what do we do with this here? <clears throat> Let's take a look. Okay, suggestions. How do we simplify this? How do we organize our thinking on this one? <coughs> what, well, I guess what are the steps involved in simplifying that? Yeah, good. Okay, we're gonna break it up into the number parts, right? We got the we got simplify the numbers, and then we'll break it apart by like basis. We'll simplify the x's and simplify the y's separately, right? So we got three parts to that one. So the numbers, we've just got 20 over 4, which is no big deal, right? For the x's, we've got x to the 10th over x cubed. And for the y's, y cubed over y to the 11th. So what do we get? Well, 20 over 4, so what's that? 5. Okay, so what about the x's? Seven. Okay, we got 10 on the top, 3 on the bottom, so the x's stay on the top. 10 minus 3 is 7. Now what about the y's? Bottom, good. And what power? Okay, yeah. We'll just keep the y's on the bottom because 11 is, more, uh, is bigger than 3 and subtract 3 from the 11. And so this is our answer. Right, 5x to the 7th over y to the 8th. So when we put that into Moodle, then, how do we do that? I could put parentheses around the whole top. That'd be fine to do. That would that'd be absolutely fine. But I, I don't actually have to because I only have one thing on the bottom. So I could just say 5 times Five times. What do we say? X to the seventh. X to the seventh divided by y to the eighth. Was it? Okay. Display response. Tell it good. Okay. <laughs> I got it. Simplify 2x to the 4th, the quantity 2x to the 4th to the 6th. To make that a little bigger. So what do I do with that? Okay, good. i got to distribute the 6 to each one, right? If I've got, and the, the property we're using there, <clears throat> if I've got... A, B, a product to a power, I distribute the power to both factors, right? So 2 to the 6 is 64, right? And then what about this one? X to the 4th to the 6th. What do I do if I take a power to a power? Oh, I'm hearing add and multiply. Which one is it? No, 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 no. Not add. Add is if I multiply like bases. If I say a to the m times b to the, whoops, sorry, times a to the n, where I've got like bases, if you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. But if you take a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. 
2 to the 6. 2, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64. Okay. And then, <coughs> finish that out, you just told me x to the 24, right? Okay, and that's right. We won't even check it. That's right. Okay. Now, what about this one? Looks complicated, is it? No. Extremely simple. What are we doing? We're adding polynomials. Add them. Add like terms. Yeah, just add like terms. So if I've got x to the fourth plus x cubed plus x plus one plus this other polynomial, just add up the like terms. So how many x to the fourth do we get? Well, it looks like two. Right? That plus that. How many x cubes? Well, there's only one x cubed term, so it's and it's got a coefficient of one. Two uh, x squared. It looks like x plus x is two x, and then one plus one is two. Make sense? Okay. If I were subtracting, same deal. Just get, if this had been a minus sign. I would have just distributed the minus sign to all those parts, right, each term, and then just added like terms. Same deal. Okay, now multiplying a little bit more complicated. There's a little bit of room for mistake with multiplying, but still not hard. What do we do with, with multiplying? Polynomials like that. Let's take a look at this guy. Sure. Let's distribute from the, the polynomial with fewer terms to the polynomial with more terms. We only have to distribute three times. All right, so if we distribute the x squared, what are we going to get? x squared times 4x cubed. 4x to the fifth. Multiply like bases, you add the exponents plus x squared times x squared, we agree x to the fourth, minus, what's this one going to be, x squared times minus 3x, 3x cubed, next. 2x squared. Okay, now let's distribute the x. What do we get? Four, but it's x times 4x cubed. So that's x to the 1. 4x yeah. to the 4th. Okay, and, and let's go ahead and just line these up vertically. You don't have to do that, but I just think it's easier. And then I heard it plus x cubed. Good. Minus 3x squared plus 2x. And then finally, if I distribute the negative 2, what's that going to do? Negative 2 times 4x cubed. Okay, negative 8x cubed. Negative 2x squared, good. Plus 6x, good. And Minus 4, good. Okay, so if we <coughs> just add up all those terms, we got it. So 4x to the 5th plus 5x to the 4th, what do we get there? Minus 10? Uh, those cancel, so minus 3. And, you know, add up. there's a lot of room to make mistakes if you take your time. <clears throat> Work carefully, but that's it. Select all of the following that are polynomial functions. Okay, now this is, well, this one didn't, i got to redo this one a little bit. So there, there's a square root. Maybe it might help to write these out. <clears throat> I'm going to do that. 
So this first one we get y equals x to the 2.8 minus 6x cubed plus 8. Is that a polynomial? What's wrong with that one? Ah, has a decimal power. That's no good, right? No good. Okay. Next one. <coughs> this guy says the square root of 7 x to the 23rd minus 198 x to the 14th plus x to the 7th <coughs> plus 1. Is that okay? What's wrong with that? I, hear, I see people shaking their heads. What, what's wrong with that one? Square root of 7? Is that a problem? What are the rules for a polynomial? We've got two rules only. right? The, the powers, the exponents have to be what? Whole numbers, okay, and the coefficients have to be. No, it could be negative, but the numbers that are multiplied by the powers of x have to be what? What's the only restriction? Say again. Real. Yeah, they, they just can't have i's in. So it's square root of seven. Is that okay? Yeah, there's no i there. That's okay. It just can't be. It, it, it can be irrational like this. It just can't have an i. So that one is actually okay. Okay, next one. Let's see, this is x to the 6 plus 3x minus 2 sevenths. Fine, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, what about d? 4x cubed plus 9 minus pi x cubed. Is that okay? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Now, is it a problem that those are both x cubed? No, it's not. We could combine those into one term if we want to, but that's okay, right? No problems there. No i's, all the exponents are whole numbers. And then finally, okay, let's look at this last one. Down here we've got y equals x to the fourth, so far so good, right? Plus 7x cubed, fine. Minus 5x, fine. Oops. Uh, minus. Minus 3 over 2x. Is that okay? That's not okay, is it? Plus pi squared. What's wrong with this one? Yeah, what's the power of x there if it's on the bottom? It's negative, isn't it? That's the same thing as saying, uh, that's the same thing as saying negative 3 halves x to the minus 1 if the x is on the bottom. I can't have an x on the bottom. So that one, no good. Okay. Only those three would have been polynomials. The other two failed. Okay, questions on that? To make sense. Okay. All right, this one. There are a lot of questions on this. Let's take a little closer look at this guy. This one, I can see why. It's been a while since we talked about this, and this is kind of a weird Algebra 2 concept. We'll deal with this a lot in later years, other math classes. Okay. Okay, so what about this? f of x, they give us some polynomial function up here. As x approaches positive infinity, what does f of x approach? If your answer is positive infinity, enter 999. If your answer is negative infinity, enter negative 999. If your answer is neither, enter 333. Okay, so remember what we do with these. Now, we know that for a polynomial, whenever x approaches, and think what we're doing on a graph here, I guess. 
whenever we go clear out there, that's when x approaches positive infinity. Or when we go clear back that way, when x approaches negative infinity. We always know that the polynomial is going to get really big in a positive direction or a negative direction. It always will. So you know that the answer is always going to be something like this. As, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches some kind of infinity, the question is just, is it positive or negative every time? That's the only thing we have to answer, right? And the way you answer that is just by looking at that first term, the biggest power of x. So there's the leading term, 4x to the 10th. All we've got to do is figure out what's going to be the sign of that first term. And that's going to tell us what the sign of the infinity is. Okay? So if I'm plugging in a positive number for x, I just need to know what am I going to get back, right? Well, if I look at that, this term right here is going to, it's going to be positive 4 x to the 10th. The 4 is positive, right? What about the x to the 10th? If I'm putting a positive number in for x, a positive number to the 10th power is going to be positive or negative? Think of an example. If I put in positive 1, what am I going to get? Or positive 2. Do I just get back a positive bigger number? Right? So I get a positive number times a positive number. And what's the result of that? If I multiply positive times positive, I get back positive. So that's my answer. Okay. Does that make sense? Now, how could it be different? Well, what if that had been a negative 4 out in front? Then I would have had a negative times a positive, which is negative, right? Now, what if I, let's, let's quickly look at, the, at what happens when we take powers of, of positive and negative numbers. A, po a positive number to any power is positive, isn't it? Right? What about a negative number? A negative number to an even power, like negative 3 squared, or negative 3 to the 4th, or negative 3 to the 100th is going to be what? Positive, right? Negative number to an even power, always positive, but a negative number to an odd power, negative. Yeah, exactly, right? So that's the only way that that power of x is going to ever change, is if I'm plugging in a negative number and it's an odd power, right? Okay, does that, does that make sense? Do we need to do another one of those? Anybody want to see another one of those? Yeah. Okay, let's do one more. How about this one? I'll make one up. What if we have f of x equals negative 2x to the 17 minus 3x to the 12 plus. We don't even care because that, that's the leading term, right? So as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches what? Well, we know it's going to be some kind of infinity always. What's the, what's the sign going to be? Well, if I'm plugging in a positive number for x, right, what's that leading term going to look like? I'm going to get a negative 2 times x to the 17th. Negative 2 is negative always. What about a negative, a positive number to the 17th? What sign is that going to be? Positive number to the 17th. That part's positive, right? If I put in a positive number for x, I'm going to get back a positive result. Negative times positive is negative. So my answer is negative infinity, right? Now, what about that same polynomial if we do the other possibility as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches what kind of infinity? Okay, now we got the same, same first term, so it's negative 2x to the 17th. Let's look at that again. So negative 2x to the 17th is going to give us negative. But what about this time? What if I put in a negative number? A negative number to 
the 17th, what's that result going to be? Negative. So that's going to look like a negative number times a negative number is what? Positive. Negative times negative is positive. So that's our result. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x would approach <coughs> positive infinity because that first term would be positive. Negative times negative gives us positive. So would you just put, like, how would you put that? In okay, so then remember in Moodle what, what, what we would do is it wants to know if it's positive infinity, we'd enter 999. Okay. If it's negative infinity, we enter negative 999. So if we enter negative, hold it. What was our answer? <laughs> I can't remember. It was positive, so we'd enter 999. Okay, and then For that first one, it would have been negative 999. It'll never happen. Oh, okay. yeah. Can't happen. Okay. Okay, leading coefficient. What's that? Two. Yeah, that's just the number. number in front of the biggest power of x, so it's just 2. Okay, factor. Now we get into some factoring stuff. So what about this? Factor the expression 27x cubed equals 8. How are we going to factor that? Difference of cubes. It's got, we've got two terms, so it's got to be a sum or difference pattern, right? And it's a difference, and it looks like I got an x cubed, so it's got to be, it's got to be a difference of cubes. Okay, so let's remind ourselves, maybe real quick, on this one. that pattern is. First we have to think of a way that we can write we can write that as something cubed minus something cubed. Right? The second one would just be a 2. That's pretty easy. But what's the first one? Okay, I've got to be able to yeah, I've got to be able to cube out this whole thing and get 27 times x cubed. So when I distribute the power of 3 to the x, I'm going to get an x cubed. But I have to pick the number whose cube is 27, which would be 3, right? Now we're just going to follow the pattern for a difference of cubes. Now you can just print out the, I don't, you don't have to memorize this. I don't expect you to, that's fine. But I want you to be able to use it. So what's a cubed minus b cubed? Does anybody remember what that pattern is? Remember, there's a, there's a small factor and a big factor. A minus b a squared plus a b plus b squared. Now what's our a? 3x. Okay. So there's a. There's b. So what do we get? Well, a minus b, 3x minus 2. Here's the part that if people are going to miss, that's the term they're going to miss. What's a squared? Say it again. 9x squared, because I'm squaring out the whole thing. 3x squared is 3x times 3x. That gives us back a 9x squared plus a times b, 3x times 2, 6x, and then plus b squared. That make sense? Okay. Let's just check it. Is there anything I can factor out of each of those? No. There's no greatest common factor from either one of those that I can pull out front either, is there? Okay. Can I go further with this with this quadratic one? Never. Remember, when you when you do this pattern, you always know that that quadratic that you're left with, assuming that there's no greatest common factor. That cannot be factored ever. It's always done. 
Okay? When you use that difference of cubes or sum of cubes pattern, you get the you get the linear factor and the quadratic factor. And assuming that there's no greatest common factor, you got to check for that. But if that's not there, you can't factor this into two pieces ever. Okay? Make sense? Okay. All right. Okay. What about this one? What if you have four terms? Group. Good. We group it. Okay. Let's do one of those. So we always want a grouping. Remember, we're just going to break this up into first two terms plus second two terms. And oh, and I, we should check first. Is there a greatest common factor in that polynomial? Anything I can divide out of all those terms? No, no, no number that's going to go into all those because I have a negative one there, don't I? Already. And there's no x right here in this constant to give. Now, what if what if that had what if that had been an x to the fourth, and that had been an x cubed, and that had been an x squared, and that had been an x? Well, then I could have pulled an x out front because they all would have had an x in it that I could have divided away, right? But they don't. Negative twenty x plus four. Okay, so then we can fill this thing out. We we can write up the whole problem almost, except without the numbers. We always know how this is going to develop if it works. We're always going to be able to do this. Right? Factor out a greatest common factor. We got a leftover plus greatest common factor times leftover. And we know that those have to be the same. Right? So I haven't even thought about the problem yet, but I already know how it has to look if it's going to work. Now, what's the greatest common factor from the first group? Oops, that's supposed to be a squared. Yeah, sorry. Okay, now what, what's the greatest common factor from that first group? X squared. Good. Okay, if I if I undistribute or factor out an X squared, what am I left with? What's what's this going to be? What's this going to become? X squared times what would give me five X cubed? 5x, and then how about here? Minus what times x squared is x squared? x squared times what is x squared? Is it self? Say it again. x squared times what equals x squared? What has to be, right? Check it. Does it work? 5x cubed minus x squared. Yeah, it works. Right now we know this has to be 5x minus 1. So all we have to do then is just answer the question, what, what would that greatest common factor have to be in order to get this when I distribute for both terms? Well, ask yourself the question, what times 5x is negative 20x? Negative 4. Now let's check and see if it works for the other term. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. It works. Right? So there's the grouping part. Now all we have to do is just take this 5x minus 1 and, and divide it away from each of the two groups. <coughs> so I get my 5x minus 1. And I'm left with x squared plus negative 4 is minus four, right? Okay, now that's good. Are we done? No. Not quite. Because then now if this were, I think this one just said factor it, didn't it? I gotta go back and see. Can't remember. Yeah, it just says factor. I don't like these as well. The questions I frankly like better are the ones that say solve, where these are equal to zero instead. But this one actually does say factor, so we gotta just go, that implies that we wanna factor it as far as we can. So this guy is done, but this one has an x squared in it. So we have to ask ourselves, can it be separated further? Can it? Is that a pattern that we know? Two terms, so it would have to be a difference or a sum pattern. It's a square, 
So that fits the difference of squares pattern, right? Now, what is the difference of squares pattern? Let's remind ourselves. What is a squared minus b squared? Okay. Here it A plus b, a minus b, right? That's that conjugate pattern, okay? So then x squared minus 4, I can think of that 4 as being a 2 squared. So x squared minus 2 squared, right? And that one breaks up then into what? x is like a and 2 is like b. Yeah, x plus 2, x minus 2, okay? There it is. Now we're done. Okay. Questions? Okay. Okay. Find the least and greatest real solutions of the polynomial equation. Okay, so we're going to find all the solutions and we're just going to input the furthest left and the furthest right. Okay. Least and the greatest. So how are we going to do this one? Now we, we went through all the strategies yesterday, so that's fresh in your mind. our strategy for that? How many terms we got? Three. Three. Okay, so, so how are we going to solve that? So what, what kind of a polynomial, what kind of an approach do we take? We're going to do the factor by triangle. Okay, we, we could. It's a, it's a quadratic style, isn't it? We could either factor it like we did in Chapter 5, or we can always fall back on what alternative? Quadratic formula. Sure. What's, if we use quadratic formula, what's A, what's B, what's C? A is 1, B is B. Negative 10, C is 9. Okay, good. Now let's look at this one both ways. So I want you to see both ways. And there, I don't think there's that big a difference, really, honestly. Are there magic numbers that multiply to positive 9 and add to negative 10? What would they be? Negative 9 and negative 1. Negative 9 and negative 1. So this thing, we could unfoil this, right? We could make this look like... My magic numbers are negative 9 and negative 1. And what's my first term going to be if I'm unfoiling this? x squared. Right. i got to have x squared and x squared because first times first, when I foil it, has to give me back x to the fourth. Right? Okay. So now this is where it's really important that you see what we're doing here. Now what? What, what's the best strategy here? I mean, I could factor that further, but do I need to if I'm trying to just find the zeros? No, no, we, need to solve it. Yeah. Zero. we can just use the zero product property. We can just set that factor equal to zero, right? And let's solve it. What do I do to solve for x? Add 9. So x squared equals 9. So x equals plus or minus. <coughs> plus or minus 3. Okay, what about this one? If I set that equal to 0, and I do the same process, I get x squared equals 1, so what does x equal? Plus or minus, good. Square root of 1 is just 1, right? So those are my four answers. I get negative 3, positive 3, negative 1, positive 1. Now, the question asked, if you remember, it asked for the least solution and the greatest solution. So what would, what would the greatest solution have been? Three. Yeah. So that's three. What's the least solution? Negative. Let's say it again. Negative three. Good. Okay. The negative one and the positive one are just in the middle. Okay. Garrett. Okay, good, we're getting there. Okay, so now what about this one? Okay, this is kind of a 6-6 six, six, six style question. 
Uh, x equals 4 is 1, 0 of this polynomial that they're giving us. Find the least and the greatest of the remaining real zeros. Okay? Of the remaining. Now that's. I'm going to cut this out. Okay, so what about this? X equals 4 is one zero, 1, 0 of this polynomial. Find the least and the greatest of the remaining. So we don't care about the 4. That one's given to us. The others, if they're there, how would we find those? What's the easiest way to do this one? Synthetic division, absolutely. So we'll just set up a synthetic bracket. What number goes out front? 4. There's our four. And then the coefficients are what? One, two, negative 19, and negative 20, right? Okay, and then how do we do this synthetic thing again? How do we do? Okay, drop the one down. Good. One times four is four. Add, so we get six. Twenty-four, and then I get what? Five. Right. Five times four is twenty, and I get a zero there. So we knew four was a zero. We knew that had to happen, right? But what's the significance of this stuff right here? Those, those are the coefficients, right, in order of the of the polynomial of the factor that we're left with. So there's the constant. There's the six is the coefficient of x, and one is the coefficient of x squared, right? So that's what we've got to. We're just going to find the zeros of that, right? So we're going to come up with the equation then from this. We just want to know when is x squared plus 6x plus 5 equal to 0. That's quadratic. I could either factor it if it factors easily or use the quadratic formula, right? Uh, does it factor easily? Two numbers multiply to 5 and add to 6. Yeah. x plus 5, x plus 1, right? And the zeros then would be what? Negative 5 negative 1, right? So we go back and let's just try those. So the least would be negative 5. Greatest negative 1. Yeah. Okay, and we got it. I think, or do we have one more? Oh, we have a few more. Nice. We may not get through all these. That's okay. How are we doing for time? Let's do one more. Uh, okay, so th this is easy. The good one to end on. This is an easy one. All we're doing is synthetic division, right? So we got to be careful with this, but that's all we're doing. So we're dividing a polynomial 3x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus negative 1x squared plus 2x minus 3 by x plus 1.
Okay, so all we got to do then is we just need to set up our bracket, right? So let, let's just plug in. I'll put the numbers right next to the spots here. So what are the what are the coefficients going to be for us? Oops, three. So we get three x to the fourth, two x cubed, negative one x squared, two x, negative three. Now here's an important one. Oh, did I skip the first part of that? I think I did. If we go back to this page, I forgot one part of that. Oh, no, I didn't. Never mind. What am I saying? Here it is. Uh, if this is the polynomial, this is this is key. This is where people could make a mistake. This is simple. Gosh. Simple to make a mistake on this. If this is the polynomial that we're dividing by, what's the number that goes out front? Negative 1. It's the 0 of that, right? We're going to set x plus 1 equal to 0 and solve, so x equals negative 1, right? Okay, and then we just do all the synthetic division and see what we end up with. Okay, let's see what we get. So if I drop the 3 down, negative 1 times 3 is 6, plus 2 is 8, negative 1 times 8 is negative 8, so I get negative 9 when I add up, right? Did I make a mistake? Yep. Oh, what am I changing? Yeah. What? What was I looking at there? That should be three, shouldn't it? Yeah. Negative one times three is I, I guess I what was I? I was I was multiplying that, I guess. Negative one times three is negative three. Add those up, get negative one. Negative one times negative one is one, plus negative one is zero. There. Is that looking better? Negative one times zero is zero, plus two is two. Negative one times two is negative two plus negative 3 is negative 5. And they wanted the value of k, which is negative 5. Okay? Make sense? All right.